Ոսմանման հովանավոր Dignity Health Glendel Memorial Hospital։ Hi, my name is Dr. Manuel Momjin. I'm practicing at Dignity Health Glendale Memorial Hospital. We live in beautiful, sunny Southern California. You get up off the couch, walk around the block. Staying active is going to be very, very important to maintaining your health and preventing many, many disease processes. Diabetes, blood pressure, obesity, osteoporosis, and the list goes on and on. Pari e regos i rinik pare gam ner. Ai surra mer haida kirne Armenian Eye Care Project vor Amerikai mec hastadvats hastadut jumne vor gashkadi Hayastani mec yevge haytaite arokcha bagan ashkadat ner Hayastani panagish nerun irents achki betkegats korjogutun nere yev pujum nere. Ai surra mer hyurernen Dr. Roger Hanesiana vor ai Armenian Eye Care Projectin ինքն է ղեկավարը եւ ինքը հաստատած աս հաստատություն 1992-ին I think what has been most exciting about the Armenian Eye Care project is the different programs that we have started and that have really turned out to be better than I would have ever imagined. I would say that Armenian Eye Care Project is the most successful project in medicine in Armenia. Armenia is a country that's had a very hard history. We've been able to change this so that rather than having the predominant conversation being about the past hundred years, it's really starting to shift and we're changing that to a discussion about what about our child's, what about our future? What about the next hundred years? When we first entered Armenia 20 years ago, it was like the heart of the healthcare system had stopped. The country was at that point in time at war. The ophthalmology was about 30 years behind. When we first started, we were the providers of care. We were the emergency medical technicians taking care of the worst cases. We learned fairly quickly that we ourselves could not possibly meet the medical need. The reality was is at the time the people there were very well intentioned, the physicians there, but they didn't have the training to really handle the problems. The fellowship program was to bring the doctors from Armenia over to America for a year-long training and then to bring them back to Armenia where they'd have all the equipment and be able to perform the same surgical procedures that they were performing in America. Ինչ սարքավորում որ մենք որոշում ենք որ պետք է Ռոջեր Ռոհանիսյանը բոլորը ձեռք բերեց Of everything what's needed now for providing the patient maximum care Those Armenian doctors then began to train other doctors so they've improved the entire state of ophthalmology We started out the ophthalmology was about 30 years behind Fast forward to the future now the Doctors in America and other countries of the world are coming to Armenia to learn the latest glaucoma techniques. In 2009, the doctors in Armenia began to see almost an epidemic of babies who are actually showing up completely blind in both eyes. Retinopathy of prematurity is a condition that affects children who are born early. And the management of that is very tricky. If you miss a week or two, the baby can be blind, and that means blind for life. We started the program in 2010, and we started with a screening program. It went on from there. We then were able to build this center of excellence for the reduction and elimination of childhood blindness. These are doctors who we've been training for the past five years. Does a chance of blindness without surgery? 
there's, a, there's quite a high chance of blindness. Um, but the surgery is also very difficult. So everything went fine. Uh, they were very difficult operations. It's nice to be able to tell them that you know everything went well. I as a follow-up project, when we went into the neonatal intensive care units, we realized that the nurses there had no formal training in intensive care unit nursing. In Armenia, a country of about 3 million people, just 1 million live in the capital city. So while we had outfitted the, the main hospital with very modern equipment and good training, two-thirds of the population live too far to, to get there or couldn't afford to get there on their own. As time passed, it became necessary to treat people that are in the more rural areas. And for that, the mobile eye hospital was developed. We've got local doctors who run the mobile eye hospital. Mobile, da, mes, yet groom, gorzoch, amena catarial, baregorza cancer agidne. More than a half a million people have been screened. We perform more than 40,000 surgeries. So the truck, even though it might only visit once or twice a year, at least begins to provide the very beginnings of access to quality health care. But it's just that it takes two years to go around the entire country, and some patients can't wait that long. <laughs> Our experience over 20 years in Armenia has shown us how to build clinics. So at this point in time, our efforts are to put in regional centers. Putting together regional clinics is going to take a lot of partnerships, but we already have these in place. Today we dedicated a, an eye clinic uh, in Tavush, and it's the first regional eye clinic of the Armenia Eye Care Project. All these sites will be connected to Yerevan via telemedicine and the internet. We're very happy about that because it takes a lot of stress away from the mobile unit. This is our first one, of course, one that we're quite excited about. But more than that, we have four more to go. It brought so much light in my life personally. Hey, I am here. 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 I am
Adriana Dermenjana, or Armenian High Care Project Dean, Director of Communication. So, Pariye Gazek, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to conduct it in English for just at ease. Uh, so, uh, what I was, um, you know, saying to our audience that the, you started this project in 1992. Can you tell us a little bit about the background? Why did you decide to start this project? Well, it, it actually, I'm second generation Armenian. Right. And growing up, I grew up in Watertown, Massachusetts, but really had a series of friends that were both Armenian, Greek, Irish, uh, Spanish. And so it, it wasn't necessarily that we all just went around as an Armenian group. And as I grew older, uh, there were other experiences that I had when I was uh, young, I spent quite a bit of time with my grandparents. And my grandfather had gone back to fight in 1920, uh, to, to fight the Turks in, in an effort to regain the lands that had been stolen after the uh, genocide. And he told me when I was a kid, I, he would always give me stories, tell me the stories about uh, the escapades that they had. I'm just glad he got out with his life. Um, he told me that, that uh, someday, I would get the call, and when I did, this is when I was about 12 years old, when I did, uh, he gave me his knife and his gun so that I'd be able to protect myself. And I still have those. You still have it. I still have <laughs> it. Your grandfather's gun. Right. And, and who knew that, that tw uh, 40 years later, I would get the call in the form of a fax. And it was from the Minister of Health who said that the country was in terrible shape. They had a war that was ongoing with Azerbaijan. The, um, they had an earthquake just a couple years earlier. And they just had the normal natural diseases that happen in a country of three million. So they needed help. They needed help to combat the, the, the wave of blindness that was overtaking all these people who had eye diseases. When you get that fax, you know, I guess back then there was faxes. When you got that fax, what went to your head? Did you remember your grandfather or you said, this is the, of the call I was waiting for? It, it, it Emotionally, probably, it was probably very difficult. It, 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 there was just no question when I got it, I, I realized that I needed to do something. My grandfather had probably been faced with the same circumstances and he went back and I felt that it was an obligation that I needed to go back. And besides that, I, I wanted to be able to help. That's why I went into medicine, to be able to help people. Help people yeah. This looked like an ideal way to be able to help people who were from my ancestry. So did you go when you got that fax in I did. I, I first of all called my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Asking, can I go? <laughs> to, to make sure. She was off. She had already gone with my son to London. We were going to begin a vacation uh, for two weeks. And so I asked her if she would mind if I, instead of going to London, on the vacation if I went to Armenia. And she said, no, go, I, I envy you to be able to help to do something, go mm -hmm. ahead. And so with that I went, not knowing where the country was, didn't speak the language, didn't know the religion very well. So I, 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 I went and brought with me um, uh, several thousand bottles of, of uh, antibiotics and, uh, and medicines that I'd be able to use, including anesthetics. And when I went to the country, I was shocked at, at, at how bad things were. They were absolutely terrible. Back in 92? In 92. In 92, the, the war was still on. They had, when, when, I, when we arrived and in, in, I was picked up at the airport, there were no lights anywhere. And we, we drove into Yerevan and it was pitch black. Yet when I saw from the, the headlights, there were these long lines. And I didn't know what was going on, but I certainly found out that they only had electricity two hours a day and water one hour a day. It was just, it, it was terrible. The, uh, the instruments that they had at the hospital were dull. They, many of them, the scissors didn't cut. We used, we used the, the um, Boy Scout knives to be able to take and cut. Uh, instruments and so cut, it was deplorable. Cut the conditions were, were they were terrible. Terrible con conditions back in ninety two. In, in ninety two. So, 
what did go through your head when you saw this, you know, this country? It's in shambles, basically, just come out of a, a huge earthquake and um, just come out of the Soviet Union, yeah. crumbled. Uh, I think it started off the war with Azerbaijan also. Yes, the war had been going on for, Karapakh. I think, uh, uh, four years by that time. Yeah. It started in 88. So what did you go through your head? I said, gee, what I'm doing here? Or no, I want to come in and help the, the uh, country. Uh, well, I knew, I knew ophthalmology, and I, I, I had worked in emergency rooms uh, for a very long time prior to even going into ophthalmology. So I felt comfortable in emergency situations, uh, situations and with ruptured globes and, and, and uh, lacerations and uh, various other things that, that really were, that I saw all the time there. I remember going into a room where they had all these men from the, from, they were soldiers. They all had dark glasses on. Mm -hmm. and they had dark glasses on because, because they had eyes that were so badly injured or removed that they didn't want to scare people. their families and scare people because they really did look quite hideous. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do here, but at least I was working with Dr. Malayan, who was the chief, and who was working nonstop during all that period of time, rarely going home because he just, there were so many surgeries that he needed to be able to do. All the doctors, they, were, they worked extremely hard and I, I did what I could to help. These were doctors in Armenia. These doctors in Armenia, yes. Okay. And, and they had no supplies or lack of supplies? That was it. They had, no supplies. They had run out of supplies. supplies. They had no anesthetic. Yeah, they, they had I no mean, how can you do surgery with no anesthetic? It's terrible. What they did for anesthesia, for some of these very brave young men, they, they'd have to operate on their eye or repair the eye. They would give them glass, cracked glass, to hold in their hands while they were being operated on. Jeez. So that it would divert the attention from, from the, the pain in the eye. They would bring the pain in their hands. It's mm -hmm. incredible. Wow. So what went through emotion? Obviously, it's an incredible scene, incredible situation. What went through your head? I said, oh my God. I mean, I need to help here, right? Yes. I need to do everything I can to help yes. my country, my, my people. Yes. You felt that emotional attachment. It, 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 was, it was overwhelming. I, I, I weeped a lot because it was some of the cases that you saw were just so tragic that, that you couldn't believe that anyone would do this to, to, to kids. Things. There were so many kids that I saw. I was so bothered by the fact that there were so many children. I asked, why, why are there so many kids? And apparently, what would happen is that they would take and mine a lot of the uh, schoolyards and the playgrounds. The, the Azerbaijanis, when they occupied areas, they would take and mine these two areas with, um, uh, with landmines and with, uh, with these bombs that, that were dropped on these areas of schoolyards and playgrounds. And the kids would find them. And the reason that it was this way is that it takes if you want to depopulate your enemy's army, you injure children because it takes two people to take care of an adult and four people to take care of a child. And so there were so many kids that were injured, it was, it, it was hideous to see. But I felt that I didn't know what I could do, but I knew if I kept on coming, I would be able to figure things out. And we're going to talk about that. How did this, from one trip, develop into a project, into a mission. So we will, we will discuss that. Now, um, you, when did you join the Armin IK project? I joined in 2015, so. Recently? I, recently, yeah. You were not in these No, I, I was <laughs> seven years old when this happened, so revealing my age. But yes, so I joined, I, I saw an advertisement in the newspaper and it, I've always, you know, I've heard, I'd heard of the Armenian Eye Care Project before, and I'd always admired the the organization and the cause, and it was a dream come true for me to, to contribute in some way to it. Okay. We're going to take a very short break. Mm -hmm. In this business, we have to take breaks, and sure. we'll come back, and we'll talk how this one trip developed into a mission project, mm -hmm. and, and it's incredible. I mean, I'm just like, can't wait to hear 
uh, the story that, that you develop into this thing. It's marvelous. Serial Paygamner Garç Tatarami Hello Bidi Biratanak Merayda Krim. Serial Paygamner Meng Aysorba Hayda Kirne Armenian Aykir Project Yevrenc Ashkadankner Hayastani Mech. Just before the break, yeah. you know, in my mind was. Uh, as I'm listening to you describe the deplorable conditions and the situation, lack of supplies, lack of equipment in Armenia, clearly you feel emotionally very close because it's your own people. Yes. It's your own nation. We're not talking somewhere in Africa, mm -hmm. far away from us. It's our own blood, so to speak. What went through your head? I said, I need to come back again here? Or this is it, I'm not coming back? Emotionally too charged for me even to do this thing? I had been on previous mission trips to Guatemala, Costa Rica, other, other countries. And on those times, we went down and reduced the world's number of cataracts by 100 and then came back bringing all the equipment and all the people with us, teaching people down there how to do these procedures, but returning with the same equipment that we brought. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that that was a little bit dicey. If you want to really train someone, if you really want to teach people, you have to go to the same place time after time and really teach and bring equipment so that they can use the equipment even when you're gone. When I went back, uh, when, when I had gone the first time, one of the persons who I had operated on was a young woman, 13 years old, young girl, Christine. I still remember her name. Christine um, had a disease that was a serious disease that had caused the vis vision in one eye to be lost. And she had the same sort of disease in the other eye that required surgery because it, it was a type of glaucoma where the pressure becomes very high in the eye and you can lose all vision. So she needed a certain type of surgery and I performed it on her and she did very well and I was very pleased with the result. And then maybe a week or so, two weeks afterwards, I left and went back to California. And then I received a letter from her and the letter said, Dear Dr. Roger, uh, I knew that I could ask you for help and receive it when you came. And I still have great faith in you. But I've noticed by the worried looks on my parents' faces and the averted gazes of the doctors that I'm not doing well. Please come back. Don't abandon me. Please come back and help this 13-year-old girl. Very eloquent for a young woman. Very. And what could I do? I had to go back. And so within six months, I went back again. And when I did, this time, I brought with me a colleague who's a specialist in glaucoma. I, I asked him if he would come and see a patient. And he said, of course. And he said, I said, well, um, yeah, but uh, she's, I've, she's only got one eye, and, and I've operated on one of the eyes. I said, no problem. And I said, yeah, well, there's a problem. She's only 13 years old. He said, no problem. I said, yeah, well, there's one other problem. She lives in Armenia. <laughs> and he said, no problem. He's going to say, wait a minute. And with that, he I'm serious. He came with me that Saturday. This was Wednesday or Thursday. And he came with me Saturday to Armenia and operated on this young girl, as well as maybe about 50 other people, because his, his specialty is very, very needed in Armenia. In Armenia. So that started me going every six months. And you know, if I've been there... 55 times, as I have. Rick Hill, who came with me on that, that second or third trip, has been there 50 times. He's been terrific. No Armenian blood at all, but he knows it's a humanitarian thing to do. It's the reason we all went into so medicine. Rick, uh, the other doctor, went there 50 times to yes. Armenia. Yeah. And operated free yes. to help the right. people of Armenia. Yeah. No stipend, no, no money at all for it. Yeah. And that started the idea of bringing other doctors with, with me. And so each and every time I went, I would bring two or three other doctors and got to the point where we would bring five and ten doctors 
all in different specialists, and they would teach the Armenians, how uh, Armenian colleagues, how to be able to do these different okay. procedures. So that's a very important point. Now, so far, you, at that time, yes. you were going by yourself and other colleagues to operate there yes. as a humanitarian thing. Mm -hmm. When did you dawn on you, wait a minute, maybe I should train the doctors here that they can do it, that you know, we don't have to constantly help them out there? Very early on. Early on. You yeah. decided that the That's best way right. to do is to train That's the right. Armenian physicians. If I first went in 92 by 94, 95, 96, I, I was bringing with me a half a dozen other doctors and it expanded up to 10, or 10 doctors that I and, would bring and, with and me. And when did you form the Armenian Eye Care Project? In those first years. First year yes. you formed it. That's right. Okay. When did you put the surgical center there or the center that you have currently in Armenia? When? Which year? Well, I must say is that this was, we operated on, uh, it, within the Malayan Ophthalmic Center. It was at that time called the Republican Eye Center. It's been named after Dr. Alex Malayan, who is the doctor I know there. Uh, it, it was named after his father, who was the patriarch of all the other eye, eye doctors. And so uh, there was a place for us to operate, but it was obvious that they needed better equipment, mm -hmm. and we did that. I mean, So you took equipment from U.S. to yes, Armenia? Yes, yes. I all mean, big shipments through Harut Sosunyan at that time had the United Armenian Fund. Fun. And UAF, yes. we brought over tons of equipment. Okay. And with, again, you know, the thing that's so great is that this was all done for free. Mm -hmm. When did you join the organization? In 2015. 2015. Yes. Why did you decide to join? I just, I, it, it's something I've always wanted to do. And when I, the more I learned about the organization, the more it really called to me. And, you know, we were just talking about the, the fellows. So all of the fellows that, that came to America to do fellowships went back to Armenia to, to uh, develop subspecialty clinics in the Malayan Eye Hospital. And that's just one of the, the many different programs that we do. So, so the fact that everything was based on medical education and, and giving Armenians the tools to really expand everything that they were doing and develop it even more was, was just so inspirational for me. So you're based in, in Los Angeles, right? Yes, you're, yeah. How many times do you go to Armenia? So this, I, this year will be my third time going to Armenia, second time with the Armenian Eye Care Project. So last year I, we, was our big 25th anniversary trip, and we had our medical mission, and we also decided to do a trip for our donors and friends of the Eye Care Project, people who wanted to see our programs on the ground. Mm -hmm. And that was just so successful, and mm -hmm. we got great feedback from yeah. that that we decided to do it again <laughs> this year. What was this 25-year anniversary project? I mean, it was a big gala, or it was a mission in Armenia? What was it? It, it really was everything. So it was a medical mission that, of course, the, the ophthalmologists do twice a year. But in addition to that, this time we decided to, to kind of expand it and bring our donors and our friends who are interested in going to Armenia and seeing our programs to, to be able to do that. And we decided because it was our 25th anniversary, this was really the time to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. And, and we had you know, people visiting our mobile eye hospital, mm -hmm. our subspecialty clinics at the Malign Ophthalmological Center, our regional eye clinics, all of our programs. And then we also, of course, sprinkled in some tours so that they would enjoy, because many of them were going to Armenia for the first time. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was wonderful, and we're doing it again this year in the fall. So we're excited about that. And, and I can tell you, as Adriana found that she really is very good at, at bringing people together and together. keeping <laughs> them in various places and so mm -hmm. forth. She did a great job. Oh, thank you. Uh, how many times do you go to Armenia a year? I typically go no. now. Oh. It's, it's, it's gone back to being twice a year. Twice a year, okay. I find that, that um, it's, it's been once a year quite a bit of the time. And the reason is that they now, it's gotten to the point where the staff that we have over there is so able, they're so capable of being able to perform all the things that are necessary. We have an administrative staff with Nune Yegiazarian as the executive director over there. And we have... Um, a, uh, these clinics, the 
the clinics, the, the, the cornea clinic, the glaucoma clinic, the retina clinic, all have been supported by, and the equipment has been purchased by, the Armenian Eye Care Project, so that the clinics themselves that are within the Malayan Ophthalmic Center are able now to do cases that formerly would not be done in Armenia. They would be sent out. They would go to Russia. We're going to take a short break, and when okay. we come back, we'll continue with that. All right. Just hold your thought. Sir Paigamner, I saw one mayor Haida Kirne, Armenian I care project, highest image. Um, besides, uh, I mean, the donation you said, it's all, uh, everything is paid by the donors, right? There's no, That's right. you have no budget, no government help or anything like that. It's well, all. Well, that's not 100%. true. 100%. Oh, okay. I, I, I take that back. I, I, I guess I'm, I think of the donations. We've gotten donations from USAID. Okay. Uh, they've been terrific for us. In fact, on, on one of the trips, I brought with me uh, Tom Lee, another good Armenian name, <laughs> who came from, uh, he was the, he's the, the chief of, of uh, chairman of the Department of Ophthalmology at Vision Sciences at Children's Hospital in LA. Mm -hmm. He came over and, I mean, it's been amazing. He came over in 2010 and saw the difficulty that we had with retinopathy of prematurity. And he started a screening program that with the help of Rosanna Haratunian in Armenia, who is the chief of pediatrics. And we were then able to um, have a, a screening program that identified this disease, this horrible disease that happens to premature babies. They go blind oh. in the first months of their lives. Blind forever, bilaterally. Oh. And so, you know, you say, how many of them are? It was two to 300, not that many. But if but you still, think, not that many. One but that, is too many. Right. But, but if you take that out to, you know, uh, 80, 90 years, these people, these kids are going to live to see the year 2010, excuse me, uh, uh, 2100. We won't, but they will. So that means that, that they're going to be blind all those years. He has treatments and methods that he... He does to prevent this disease from causing them to lose vision. Mm -hmm. And so we now have incorporated those in Armenia. And it's taken the number from two to 300 down to 15. Mm -hmm. But he's not even satisfied with the 15. He, we, we, we went to USAID and, and uh, applied for a grant and received monies to be able to build an operating room inside a neonatal intensive care unit that's inside a maternity hospital. In Armenia. In Armenia. It's unlike anywhere else, really. It's just, that's not, it's not usually done that way. But this way, if a child has this disorder, you can bring him into the operating room from the intensive care unit, bring him right into the operating room and operate on this kid's eye. Mm -hmm. And I gotta tell you, the operation itself is unbelievably intricate and, uh, and, and it means that you have to take and bring two instruments that are about the size of a toothpick and insert it into the eye. Uh, this is a premature baby's eye. It's about the size of a small pea mm -hmm. and operate in there. It's incredible. But with it, he's been able to save these kids. They've done 27 of these operations and been able to save the vision on the these vision. 27 kids. Uh, what are some of the projects you do in, in California, let's say, to support the mission? Well, we, we again, we always rely on just donors, um, whether it be individuals or we have, we've been Corporate very donors. lucky. Corporate donors or, you know, USAID has helped and uh, our, our recent diabetes program, the World Diabetes Foundation, it gave us a grant for. So we've been very fortunate. Latter-day Saints, too. And Latter-day Saints, yeah, LDS Charities, the humanitarian arm of the Latter-day Saints, also donated lasers, medical equipment, to our diabetes program that just launched last year. So we've been very fortunate with all of those um, sponsorships and donations from donors, corporate sponsors, foundations. And that's what primarily we do in California, in the U.S. And, of course, in Armenia is where everything happens and all the execution of all those programs 
and the Armenia staff just does an amazing job of facilitating. So the entire that. budget is, um, you know, pretty much, uh, I mean, 100 percent is from donations, right? Right. People donate, yes. and primarily in U.S., right? Yes, I mean, of course. it's a U.S.-based uh, organization. Right. And uh, you go to Armenia too as well? Yeah, or? I do go to Armenia. Uh, it's the second time will be this year. And mm. when we do go, we, we visit the programs. We, uh, especially if, if uh, donors want to come and, and friends. Oh, you took the donors last time, right? Yeah, we took the donors last year. We're doing it again this year, um, just so they can see really where their dollars are going. Because it's one thing to for us to tell them what we're doing, and it's one thing to show them. And that's what we really we really want to do because it's an amazing thing that's that's happening and so many people's lives are changed in Armenia. We want to show them. How many physicians you have in Armenia? Within the Eye Project? Yeah. We have about 20. 20. So you have 20% of the doctors there if you take 100 <laughs> well, physicians. Well, yes. One of the things that we do, people who have who have income and who have uh, uh, wealth, they we refer them to their local ophthalmologist to be treated. Um, but people who are no, poor, poor, yeah, they have no income. And who have no income are the ones that we operate on. But, and you do it free of and charge. And it's free, and mm -hmm. everything is for free. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things I must tell you is that, as you probably are aware, one third of the country, uh, a million of them, live in Yerevan. Two million live in the rural areas, and they are the ones that are desperately poor. Poor. So we found that many of them couldn't even afford the gas for the car that would bring them to Yerevan, where they could have the cap, where they could have the surgery done for free. So we give them free gas. No, them? no, we we tried a number of different things, including sending the doctors out to the regions. But that's no good if they go out to the region and they don't have equipment. It's like sending jet yeah. pilots out to ride bicycles. Yeah, of course. So what we did is built a mobile eye hospital. Oh, okay. So you put a mobile unit that goes around the various and regions. That's right. And this is a $2 million, $3 million um, uh, mobile eye hospital that has all the equipment in it. It's got two examination rooms, two lasers, all the uh, diagnostic instruments, as well as a full, fully equipped operating room. And they have been around the country now seven times and have operated on uh, approximately 250 people who were cataract surgery, uh, glaucoma, and also la done lasers uh, and had lasers done. So it has all the equipment that you need to be able to function and treat the patients that are needed. What are the uh, common diseases? You mentioned glaucoma, you mentioned, uh, you know. They're the uh, natural ones. They're, I mean, the, the, the greatest cause of blindness in the world is diabetes. Mm -hmm. And so there are an awful lot of people who have diabetes, diabetic retinopathy, and hemorrhages that happen in the back of the eye. I'm going to talk about that in a moment, but there's the major diseases that we treat are cataracts, glaucoma. Uh, cataracts are where the lens in the eye becomes clouded. Glaucoma is when the pressure in the eye goes up and presses on the nerve and cuts off the nerve supply. There are other uh, uh, inflama inflammatory diseases of the eye and blood clots and various other things. Is there something unique about Armenia, about these diseases, or it's general? You see it, let's say, in a practice in LA. Certain diseases have a, a greater unique likelihood. Characteristic, yeah, for Armenia, let's say. For Armenia, well, it's, it's, but it's because of bad habits. If it is the people eat a lot, get very obese, or if they drink a lot, um, uh, and they smoke. Yeah, and those, I mean, those things are those, common those in Armenia. Those three Armenia. things, those three things will cause a higher incidence of these blinding diseases. And it's also knowledge too, you know, knowledge of the fact that a lot of people Very think when, when you have cataract, oh, I'm just, I'm, when, as I go older, I'll just go blind. That's just what happens. Mm. When you have to tell them, you know, no, actually you can prevent blindness from getting cataract surgery or you're a diabetic, you can, we can help control you. Control your diabetes. Control, mm -hmm. and, and before it leads to diabetic eye disease and potentially blindness. And so that's what we try to do is incorporate education, public education programs, and, yeah. and just educate the public to let them know these things are preventable. Besides the surgeries and the treatment, you do education. Public, to yeah. The, yeah, public exactly. at Exactly. Okay. Well, we have another program now that we've just started, uh, and it's screening. Program. Okay. Our effort is to eliminate preventable blindness. Yes. And the um, 
the, the disease of diabetes we're going after, we're going to take a photograph of the retina of every diabetic in the country for free. And what they'll do is the, the, we can actually send it up to the cloud. And the, the information comes back within half a minute to tell us whether or not there is diabetic retinopathy in the back of the eye. Because we know that with 3 million people, there'll be approximately 200, uh, 270,000 of them will have diabetes. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. And then of that 270,000, 90,000 will have uh, diabetic retinopathy, and 30,000 will have vision-threatening diabetic retinopathy. So those are the ones we treat with laser. Hold your thought. We're going to take a very short break. Sure. Unfortunately, in this business, we have to take some Yeah, I understand. <laughs> and then when we come back, we'll discuss that further. Okay. Thank you. Sayyid Paigamner, Garst Tatareme, the Bidi Veratar, Merhai Shat Sireli Haidakri. Seyir Pagamner, Aysova Mer Haydakir, Armenian Eye Care Project, Yevirens Aşalaktir, Hayastan Image. Just before the break, I was, I was thinking future activities. I mean, you've been doing this now for 25 years. God mm -hmm. bless you for yeah. all the work you do. It's amazing work, I mean, saving people's uh, eyesight. Uh, how do you see yourself, I hope, in other 20, 50 years, you do this thing. Only 50 years? Uh, okay, 100 years. <laughs> Thank you. Since you said 2100. I'm Armenian. Not, <laughs> we have we live forever. <laughs> forever, okay. Uh, I, I mean, first of all, you said you train the doctors here, right? Yes. So that's the very good point because, you know, constantly going there doing the mission is one thing, mm -hmm. but training the people there on the ground to themselves, mm -hmm. it's a, another great idea that we don't have to constantly support that, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And... We, we have the second, the second round, the next generation is now re perched, ready to come over again so that they will get trained in the same subspecialties of retina, cornea, glaucoma, neuro-ophthalmology, oral surgery, and they'll go back and be able to confer with the chief of the various clinics so that they can give them further education. Did you train some of these doctors here in the U.S.? Did, in did I know? They mm -hmm. are, I have to tell you, they are so well trained. In Armenia? They are so well trained in America. In Amer oh, those doctors. Those doctor doctors who came over, are, they were eager to learn. They learned very well. I've had doctors who are chiefs of the department uh, who have come over and said, these people humble me. They are so smart. They really are, they, they practice so we have good doctors in Armenia. They just need to get a little bit more advanced That's training it. in the U.S. It was just giving them a little boost, and they've, they've become wonderful. They'll be able to do it on their own. In fact, what's happening is they're getting cases referred to them. Before, we'd get a, they'd get a tough case in Armenia. They'd send it off to Russia. Now, the Russians are sending cases to, to Armenia for treatment. Because they're U.S. trained. Right. And, and, but and you train them here in the U.S. And, and one of the things that's really so impressive is they're even coming from countries that formerly they had conflict with. So it's, it's very exciting to see mm -hmm. what's happening. It's medical diplomacy. In, in Armenia? In Armenia. Do they charge those people from other yes, they countries? Do. They do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So making, yeah. they, they bring Armenia some revenue. Armenia makes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Some money. Yeah, so we have the, the which uh, Roger mentioned, the second the generation, next generation fellowship, which is something that is kind of towards the future, training the doctors in Armenia. The next uh, step. Yeah, the next generation. And um, as far as future programs, we're also doing our fifth and, well, this year we'll be uh, launching our um, grand opening of our Gyumri Regional Eye Clinic. Mm -hmm. It's our fourth clinic in Gyumri. And in 2020 or by 2020 our fifth and final regional eye clinic so we launched this program in 2015 and we wanted to create regional eye centers throughout Armenia not just in Yerevan where only one-third of the population, population lives please. so that's one of the reasons done. for that was that it takes the mobile eye hospital two years to make a rotation right. around the whole country but you know if someone's got glaucoma 
you need they to can't wait two they years. Can't wait to, yeah, exactly. So they have to have a regionalized center. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what about Artsakh? Do you guys have any um, a hub or something there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, you do. Yeah, and we've we brought equipment to Artsakh, and uh, have brought many of the doctors from Artsakh over so that they can train actually in Armenia. In in uh, and so they've been able to uh, do quite well. I'm the the. Um, uh, the, 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 the ne one of the other things that we're doing besides training the other doctors that are within the country is we have observers that... Yes, the medical observers. So we started this program, um, I don't really know exactly the year, but we, we promote students in America or outside of America that want to come to Armenia and, and observe the Armenian I mean, so physicians, yes. the physicians that came here to get their you know education and training advanced training so we're bringing people mostly from the diaspora the armenian diaspora here in the states to come to armenia and get the um observed Experience. from these armenian physicians mm -hmm. who know so much so that's one program we're we're also doing to to increase the awareness and and public knowledge of everything how is the overall Healthcare condition in Armenia is it improved now compared to these bad days of '92 oh. that oh, yeah. we talked about uh, today? Oh no, no, it, it, they, they. I would feel comfortable having my eye operated on by any of the doctors who are at the Malayan Eye Center. They are very, very experienced. Uh, you must realize that that they have done research as well. There was a, an, an instrument that is placed in the inside of the eye that treats glaucoma, it's, it, that acts as a bypass. And it was very new and very investigational. And it, a number of different places had, uh, had persons that would be the, the investigator. And then there was one principal investigator. Well, it turned out that Lilith Vaskanyan from Armenia, who did these procedures and did them so very well and had a, 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 a laboratory where she taught others that the company took the uh, principal investigatorship and gave it to Lilith, mm. which is really impressive because that means anyone in America that wants to learn how to do this goes to Armenia to, to learn how to do it. Get trained there. Get trained there, where they do three in, a wet, in a, what we call a surgical laboratory on animal eyes, and then they do three at... Uh, then, then they watch three as Lilith does it. Then they do three with Lilith being the second, being the observer, and that has turned out very well because it's brought in money to the to the uh, uh, laboratory. It's brought in um, these other doctors who learn at the side of the Armenians. They're happy about it, learning it in Armenia, and of course the doc the the patient in Armenia loves it because they get it done for free. For free, of course. And, oh, and one other thing. The country they took it away from? Turkey. Turkey. So the principal investigatorship was in Turkey and it transferred over to Armenia. It's a wonderful it success. Thrilling. At least in one area. Yeah, we, we were pleased with them. that. Uh, I know we talk about the future and how do you see overall medicine in Armenia? What's your um, let's say, uh, you know, future vision in Armenia? I think, I think if... Because I know that others, um, I brought over a couple of other doctors that are in other specialties. Ear, nose, and throat uh, doctors have come over with me. Uh, GI doctors have come. And they found their like person over there. And they're starting little mini programs of their own. Mm -hmm. My hope is that we can continue to do that and make medicine, it, it, to make it like the Mayo Clinic of, 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 Armenia. of, of, of Europe. Yeah. You know, of, of Asia. So, so do you envision Armia being a, 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 a healthcare hub? Yes. Of bringing patients yes. from other countries? It's already happening. It's already Africa. happening. So you just want to see advancement in that yeah. uh, field? In particular, in that, that, that thing I told you about, the uh, neonatal intensive care unit, the operating room, mm -hmm. there are patients that we get from all, all these other countries. Because, you know, if your child is going blind, it doesn't matter who's got the cure. You'll go there. You'll go there, mm -hmm. trying to get the cure. Sure. Um, I know we're, we're living very uh, tumultuous times. Hopefully, you know, things in Armenia is coming down now. Uh -oh. 
And, and what, are, what is your wish as, as, as Armenian American? We're almost at the end of our show. Oh. So what are your wishes I, I to look, Armenia? I look to see it be a, you know, the, the golden uh, spot in the hill. It's just... I, a I shining think a city on a shining hill. Shining city in the hill. That was yeah, it. Thank well, you. Yeah, that's the word. I think Reagan used that uh, terminology. Yeah. Uh, what about your wishes? What would you? Yeah. How do you envision this? Uh, our country, our homeland. Well, uh, our mission has always been to prevent uh, preventable blindness in Armenia, and and we're we're doing everything we can to fulfill that mission and. I see a light because, especially with the current um, situation that's happening, and you know, there's a, a great revolution going on, and and it's the future is bright in so many ways. So mm -hmm. I think we just have to keep going and keep working hard and continue educating physicians and all the different industries, so we can really become a hub of sure. many of the industries whole area. of I many mean, industries, in Europe and Asia. Yes, yeah. 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 So you you envision that? Aren't I, you? Really, I I I sincerely do. And I think that I, I, it can be done. And it doesn't, and, and I don't think of myself as anything and anyone special that has done this. It's just something that if you think of it and you put your mind to doing it, you can do it. And there are so many doctors out there that have asked questions of me about how it was done. And I recommend them doing it in their own field in Armenia. Dr. Ornesian, I yeah. want to thank you. Oh. It's been an absolute pleasure oh. to talk to you, speak to you, and your, uh, what you've done mm. for Armenia. It's just amazing. I mean, mm. just you started back in 92, oh my yeah. goodness. So you know, the, the country and the Armenian people owe a, a big thank you to you. I appreciate it. Thank you. If I can tell you one more story. Very short Very story. Short. There was a, I, went, I went by helicopter into Karabakh during the war. And one of the kids that was presented to me was a kid who had had both eyes and uh, shrapnel into both eyes. Both eyes got infected. Both eyes had to be removed. Oof. And he was crying. He was this little kid. And he was crying. And his parents were crying. And I turned to the interpreter. I said, this, what can I do? There's nothing. The eyes have been removed. But, but why is he crying? Is he in pain? And she looked and she said, sadly, no, they just learned you didn't bring new eyes from America. And that just made me realize that I had to do something. I, I, I cannot, I mean, that's what, that's what other countries think American can do. Of course. So of course. it's Good important work. that we really. Well, you brought hope to the country yeah. and the people that needed the care. Yeah. Thank you so much for oh. your efforts, to your um, tremendous you know, generosity to do this thing on your own. Basically, you started this thing on just that one trip. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, you're Thank welcome. You so Thank you. Sir, I'm going to go to the special group of the Chinese people. I'm going to go to the Dr. Anisyanin for the Armenian Eye Care Project. I'm going to go to the highest level. I'm going to go to the Chinese people. Dignity Health Glendale Memorial Hospital.